And that series of inventions by which man from age to age has remade his environment is a different kind of evolution, not biological, but cultural evolution. I call that brilliant sequence of cultural peaks the ascent of man. begin. 
with the creation, with the creation of man himself. Charles Darwin pointed the way. It's almost certain now that man first evolved in Africa near the equator. This is a possible area. The valley of the river Omo in Ethiopia near Lake Rudolph. The ancient stories used to put the creation of man into a golden age and a beautiful, legendary landscape. If I were telling the story of Genesis now, I should be standing in the Garden of Eden. But this is manifestly not the Garden of Eden. And yet, I am at the navel of the world, at the birthplace of man here in the East African Rift Valley near the equator. And if this ever was a Garden of Eden, why, it withered millions of years ago. I've chosen this place because it has a unique structure. In this valley was laid down over the last four million years, layer upon layer of volcanic dust. Four million years ago, three million years over two million years ago, somewhat under two million years ago. And then the Rift Valley buckled it, so that now it makes a map in time, which we see stretching into the distance.
For at least a million years, man, in some recognizable form, lived as a forager and a hunter. We have almost no monuments of that immense period of prehistory, so much longer than any history that we record. Only at the end of that time, on the edge of the European ice sheet, we find in caves like Altamira here and elsewhere in Spain and southern France, the record of what dominated the mind of man, the hunter. There we see what made his world and preoccupied him. Knowledge of the animal that he lived by and stalked. The obvious thing to say is that in these places the animal was magical. But magic is a word which explains nothing. It says that man believed he had power, but what power? Here I can only give you my personal view. I think that the power that we see expressed here for the first time is the power of the forward-looking imagination. In these paintings, the hunter was made familiar with dangers which he knew he had to face, but to which he had not yet come. When the hunters were brought here into the secret dark, and the light was suddenly flashed on the pictures, he saw the bison as he would have to face him. He saw the running deer. He saw the turning boar. The moment of fear was made present to him. His spear arm flexed with an experience which he would have and which he needed not to be afraid of. We also look here through the telescope of the imagination. The imagination is a telescope in time we are looking back at the experiences of the past. The men who made these paintings, the men who were present, looked through that telescope forward. They looked along the ascent of man, because what we call cultural evolution is essentially a constant growing and widening of the human imagination. The men who made the weapons and the men who made the paintings were doing the same thing. Anticipating a future as only man can do, inferring what is to come from what is here. All over these caves, the print of the hand says that this is my mark, this is man.